Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I come to you... I am, I am, I am over the moon because yesterday an American spacecraft came back from it. Here's what's happening. You may have read NASA is working on something called the Artemis program. It's going to be the first human trip to the moon since the early 70s, okay? We're getting your golf ball back, Alan Shepard. <laughs> All right? Play it where it lies. And the mission passed its first big test this past month with a launch in the middle of the night, lunar orbits, and then a safe splash town in the Pacific yesterday, completing its 26-day, 1.4-million-mile journey. Welcome back, Orion. Job well done. Been gone for a month. I have so much to tell you about White Lotus. <laughs> Even more exciting, Orion's historic ocean plop came 50 years to the day after the last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, landed on the lunar surface in 1972. That is amazing. The last time we flew to the moon, I looked like this. <laughs> Oh, buddy. Oh. Worry, he's a worried kid. It's true. It's true what they say. The camera really does add 50 years. <laughs> the Orion capsule was, in this case, an uncrewed vessel, but it did contain a mannequin named Commander Munikin Campos and two mannequin torsos named Helga and Zohar. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you scream, Helga Zohar, who took your legs? <laughs> I don't know why, just torsos. Why were they just sent torsos? The mannequin's uh, job was to test the effects of radiation on the human body, which is why Helga and Zohar were made of materials that mimic the soft tissue, organs, and bones of a woman. <laughs> a big day for science. Huge day for the loneliest nerd at NASA. Uh, good news, fellas. I've done extensive personal research on mimicking the tender touch of an actual human woman. <laughs> Please meet my lovely robot companion, Squeezella, and I'm being escorted out. Okay. <laughs> I'm being... I'm being escorted. I'm going... There you go. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Speaking of things that should be launched into space, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene... <laughs> seen here... <laughs> seen here pretending the edible didn't just kick in. Green uh, was in the Big Apple this weekend to speak at a meeting of the New York Young Republican Club, where she was celebrated by New York's young Republican community, Trent. <laughs> Green, Green got on the mic and denied that she was involved in organizing the January 6th insurrection for one insane reason. And I want to tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. So... By we, she means the rioters, and would have won, she means overthrown the government? So siding with the bad guys. What's it like to watch movies with her? I'm not sure what Jurassic means, but I can tell you, if Steve Bannon and I had been on that island, we would have eaten Laura Dern and Sam Neill for sure. <laughs> bones and all. Bones, bones, bones and all. She greened on. Washington, I swear in on January 3rd, I get accused of giving insurrection tours, which I thought was hilarious because I couldn't even find the bathroom in the Capitol. And based on what they smeared on the walls of the rotunda, neither could the rioters. <laughs> For those of you out there who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, what was it again, Madam Speaker? The poo poo. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your decades of leadership, ma'am. <laughs> when she wasn't advocating for shooting Capitol policemen, Green weighed in on the other major issue facing Americans, butt stuff. By the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target and CBS nowadays. Okay. <laughs> I just learned something. Target sells butt plugs. Now we know what their logo's supposed to be. <laughs> and... <laughs> and why... Why can't the people trying to overthrow our country be more like the fun ones in Germany? Because last week, Deutsche Police rounded up 25 far-right extremists who planned to overthrow the German government, including a self-styled prince, 
a retired paratrooper, a Berlin judge, a doctor, a cook, a pilot, a classical tenor. Ein Joker, ein Smoker, ein Midnight Toker. <laughs> Some call him Maurice. Nothing? Yeah, Nothing? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Apparently, their plan was to take control of the world's fourth largest economy, abolish its democracy, and install an obscure septuagenarian aristocrat as emperor. Come on, Germany. You're a modern country. You don't want a septuagenarian emperor. You want an octogenarian president. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's what we're, what we're talking about before, before you guys got here. The aristocrat in question is 71-year-old Heinrich the 13th, Prince Royce, who uses the royal title despite Germany abolishing any formal role for royalty more than a century ago. So basically, Prince Heinrich is about as much a monarch as Queen Latifah. <laughs> At least she uses her throne to fight injustice here on CBS. The Enforcinator, Sundays at 5. <laughs> CBS. <laughs> Heinrich XIII's behavior is not sitting well with the rest of his Teutonic clan. At least according to family spokesman Heinrich XIV, <laughs> a distant cousin who, like all male heirs to the Royce throne, is also named Heinrich. That's got to be tough at family reunions. Heinrich! Heinrich! I was so sorry to hear about Heinrich. Yeah, I loved Heinrich, but you know who I hate? Heinrich. Of course. <laughs> Me too, not as much as Heinrich. Shh, here comes Heinrich. <laughs> Character, character. <laughs> Turns out, uh, the cook insurrectionist I mentioned earlier in the list is a famous German celebrity chef, Frank Heppner, who is thought to be a member of the command staff of the military arm of the terrorist group. He's the most extreme terrorist chef since the Food Network finally canceled Osama bin Cookin. <laughs> Back in terrible show. Uh, why would they give him that show? Why on earth? Back in America, the big political story this weekend was that Kirsten Sinema announced she is leaving the Democratic Party and registering as an independent. That is shocking. Kirsten Sinema was a Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> this announcement, she was a what? <laughs> this announcement came on the heels of Raphael Warnock's victory, which guaranteed the Democrats full control of the Senate. There you go. So. Naturally, Cinema decided to make it about her. She's like the person who shows up to your wedding wearing white <laughs> or goes to your funeral in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this old thing? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's uh, he's a, he's wearing a... Wearing a... Gotta... <laughs> this is huge news and would be even bigger if it changed anything because Cinema said she expects to keep her same committee assignments which means she'll caucus with the Democrats, and told Arizonans, nothing will change about my values or my behavior. So rest assured, she may be an independent now, but still sucks. <laughs> On Friday, sucks. On Friday, uh, our friend uh, Jake Tapper asked Cinema about how this doesn't affect the balance of power in the Senate. What you're doing today doesn't change that. It's still basically going to be 51-49. Well, I know you have to ask that question, Jake. Yeah. But that's kind of a DC thing to worry about. I'm not really spending much time worrying about what the mechanics look like for Washington, DC. You work in Washington, DC. That's what your constituents hired you to go do. That's like a pilot saying, uh, attention passengers, I know you have to ask these questions about the left engine being on fire, but that's <laughs> Kind of a plane issue. I'm not spending much time worrying about the mechanics of this plane. <laughs> anyway, gotta go. Lots of flashy lights and beep beep boop boops happening up here. Hey, that's a pretty mountain. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Back when she was a Democrat, Cinema was laser focused on her number one priority undermining Democrats. She blocked Biden's initial Build Back Better proposal, blocked Democratic attempts to increase taxes on corporate America, and she torpedoed raising federal minimum wages with a curtsy and a thumbs down. 
It was the most disrespectful dismissal of the working class American since Herbert Hoover mooned Dust Bowl farmers. <laughs> Cinema's new party affiliation puts her in the same camp as other independents who caucus with the Democrats, like Angus King and Bernie Sanders, but Sanders doesn't necessarily want her in the club. He recently referred to as a corporate Democrat. It's true, she's always shilling for corporations. She's clearly in the pocket of Spirit Halloween. <laughs> I'm not sure becoming an independent is going to help cinema. In a recent poll, a solid 54% of Arizona Republicans, 57% of Democrats, and 51% of independents don't like her. That's everybody. <laughs> if only, if only there were some universal gesture to represent how the people of Arizona feel about Kirsten Cinema. There you go. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Common and the star of Emily in Paris, Lily Collins. And when we come back, Meanwhile, join us, won't you?